Something that players tend to do when faced with a new game is get skeptical of its potential value. Is this game worth my time and money, or should this game receive my attention? Seeking reviews or watching other people play a game they are interested in can make or break whether they want to give it a chance. You can imagine that something like this is rather common for a game known as criminality. A game that has one of the most negatively talked about communities and gameplay, often being compared to other street games like The Hood as well. With that being said though, I'm hoping that this video can serve as another source of information on whether you want to give this niche street game a shot though. And of course, if criminality is worth playing. Oh my, oh, oh, oh my god, oh my days, that was, nah, nah. Here I'll be explaining what the game criminality is, some of how it works and what to do, alongside how its community is and possible future. This game is a little bit more targeted to the newer fan base of the game or for those who have yet to even play, but who knows, maybe I can teach you a few things even if you're already actively playing the game. Piece of shit. Criminality, as stated in its description, is a free roam fighting game featuring punishing unpredictable gameplay with advanced combat mechanics and extensive weaponry. You, the player, are in what is known as Sector 07, the most hostile, uncontrollable sector exiled from civilized society. So pretty much the Memphis Tennessee or Roblox. Criminality features a wide variety of weapons ranging from headache inducing bats all the way to high explosive charges. And as perfectly stated by Definite, your main and almost only objective in the game is to get, get rich, rich and, and level up since everything is tied to that. Roaming the streets and witnessing someone get gunned down or getting gunned down yourself is going to be a common theme since this game is pretty much just built for that. This means don't be like me when I first started playing and thought it was some RP street game where random killing would get you banned. The community serves a big purpose in this game as well since people can form gangs. A dedicated group of players that wish to loot, level up, and fight together with some even having their very own discords as well. Now, starting out on the game heavily depends on the game mode that you select on the home screen. Casual is available to everybody off the jump, while standard and infection are level locked. The reason game modes are so important is because the core gameplay mechanics change for each one. Hop into casual, the most popular game mode, is almost like hopping into a standard server, with the key main differences between the two being how you get money, XP, and how combat works. Casual has this thing called the legacy down system. Essentially what it is, is when somebody's down, you cannot easily kill them traditionally by just attacking them while they are down, but instead you are obligated to stomp them by pressing F. It's either that or using explosives or mag dumping them a couple of times. They also don't bleed out unlike in standard, but instead slowly heal on the ground if they aren't actively being damaged until they revive themselves. Though there is an exception to this if the player down has a broken neck, then they will bleed out as normally as if it was in standard. Moving on to the money and XP, you will quickly learn that it is a bit slow. There are about three main ways of earning cash and criminality. Looting, kills, and bounties. Casual takes away one of those three options, which being the most common way unfortunately, is straight up murdering people. Leaving you with only hunting high bounties and looting to get cast and XP. But I mean hey, at least you drop less cast upon death. Getting XP in casual is almost solely through looting and your allowance. You get none from killing people and everybody's too busy role playing to get a bounty in the first place for you to kill for XP. Making this a somewhat slow start to the game, especially if you're grinding to leave casual specifically. Now infection is special, it throws out all of the original core game mechanics since it's a zombie survival game mode, meaning all your casts, XP, weapons, or anything that has to do with the main game does not transfer over to that game mode and vice versa. And yeah, I mean that's about it. What did you expect? It's a zombie game mode. But it should be known that you can get access immediately to standard if you buy the Prime Game Pass, which bypasses the level requirement and gives an additional $10,000 of starting cash. Pretty nice. And luckily at the time of this recording, Prime is only 99 Robux due to a sale. Now, if you don't have enough Robux or simply don't care enough to buy Prime though, you're going to have to reach level 20 before being able to play Standard and 3 for Infection. Now that we've gotten past all the boring stuff, let's talk about the actual gameplay and game mechanics itself. I'll be focusing this bit on standard game mode, otherwise this video is going to be way too long, but I mean, if you guys would like to see a part 2 of me talking about casuals mechanics, comment down below. If you're a new player and spawn in, you will start with $1,000 in your bank account and nothing in your wallet. It is important that you differentiate what those two things are. Your wallet cash is money actively being carried on you. 
and the same that you use to buy things with. This also means that if you die, you will drop 10% of your cash for anybody to pick up. So if you had $1,000 of cash in your wallet and died, you drop 100. But don't worry, you don't drop any of your weapons or items upon death because they kind of just disappear. When you get kills or loot places, that money goes directly into your wallet. Because of this, I'd recommend that you keep an eye on your wallet so you're not carrying an excessive amount to drop when you die. But rather, you should go to your ATM to deposit it into your bank, which is your stored money. This just means that your bank account money does not change upon death. And there are about four main ways of getting money into and out of your bank. The first being withdrawing depositing cash directly from your wallet at an ATM, while the second is claiming your allowance at an ATM as well. Every 15 minutes of playtime in the game, you will be able to redeem yourself for allowance of around $580 and a good amount of XP. The third is killing someone with a high bounty on them. Most people don't know that when you kill a bounty player, you get both the kill cash that goes into your wallet and bounty cash that goes into your bank. Lastly, we have external factors, mostly admins giving cash, mostly for the content creators of the game. I'm going to go ahead and put the buying money in this category as well, because why would you do that? There's also an option to bank buy weapons, armors, or ammo from dealers if you don't have enough cash in your wallet. You should never do this though, because it takes the amount it costs to buy the item and then put a fee on top of it because you're bank buying. But if you don't care or are rich, you can toggle this on in the options and settings. Overall, if you wish to make money in this game, you can grind by looting, getting kills or bounties, and selling items to the various dealers across the map. Looting areas are marked as combat zones, which tag players into a combat lock. This prevents players from leaving the game unless they want to lose all their items, and prevents them from selling items to dealers and depositing money into ATMs. Getting kills or breaking things in combat zones give little to no increase to your bounty as well. Now there are a few ways of looting in standard to make money. Some require specific items like a lockpick or crowbar to open safes, while you can use your fist to open registers. Safes get more cast than registers, and larger safes get more cast than smaller ones. Crates can be found on the ground as well with varying rarities. Green crates usually give a pistol, tier 1 armor, grenade, or a melee weapon, whereas red crates give automatic rifles, hand cannons, tier 2 armor, or upgraded weapons. But don't even bother trying to sell weapons or equipment found in crates, as they only sell for a fraction of their original sell price. And be sure to be aware of some high looting zones, as few are guarded by cameras that will shoot an electric shock at you if you stray too close. If you want to take them out, you're probably just going to have to shoot them. Now getting kills is most likely going to be your main source of income while passively playing, but looting can pay a lot more if you specifically just do that and ignore combat. When you game in someone or get an assist, you are paid a certain amount of money for that kill or assist depending on the server size and how much havoc the player you killed was causing. This also applies to looting by the way. The smaller amount of players on the server, the less cash you will get while looting. But anyways, the second half of that kill money comes from the player's bounty. Every time you Break something, kill someone, get an assist on someone, or looting something you probably shouldn't be looting, you gain bounty. Having a higher bounty does not benefit the player since it doesn't increase your money per kill, but it does benefit the people trying Stop to kill right you. There. When your bounty gets too high, usually at around a thousand at first, everybody in the server is messaged that you are up to no good, and whoever kills you will get a thousand dollars, or whatever your bounty is. Essentially, putting a target on your back. The highest bounty you can reach is ten thousand before it caps off, though it will take a lot to reach that in the first place unless you have a gang or crazy kid. The bounty naturally begins to lower as soon as you are out of combat combat, about 3 per second. But as long as you are still in combat, it will remain stationary until you get a kill or do something else mischievous. When you do eventually die, which you will, your bounty will reset back to zero and the server will be message of your bounty being claimed, leaving you with some breathing room once again. Combat in this game is very complex if you couldn't tell already. <laughs> The way damage is calculated can be due to a variety of reasons. Distance, part of the body hit, broken limbs, and the type of weapon used all play a role in damage. Explosives dismember and stun, guns can shatter bone and cause bleeding, blunt weapons break limbs and concuss, while blades sever, slice, and bleed them out. Your arms, legs, head, and torso all had different individual health points to them. If your legs or arms reach zero, they can be broken or cut off entirely. The torso cannot be separated from the body, but can still be brought to zero. In that case, you are probably dead before that even happens. Your head, on the other hand, as you expect, is very important. If at any point it reaches zero, you will have a broken neck. 
The only way you can be revived is by a med kit from a different player. Broken limbs can cause you to limp while trying to run or remove your ability to run altogether. It also causes scam and sway on guns and increased recoil, and depending on which arm is broken can cause worse horizontal or vertical recoil control. At around 55% health, you will begin to hobble a bit, which will slightly decrease how fast you can run, and at around 30%, you will see an even bigger decrease. Attempting to run at low health is also an issue since not only are you way slower, but you also use up your stamina much quicker than before. You can heal yourself by just not taking damage for a while, using bandages or a med kit, or buying a snack from the vending machines across the map. Splints are used solely for fixing fractured limbs. Other uncommon ways of dying though are from poison, an like admin, I didn't do anything. burning, grinders, and fall damage. Moving on to the gunplay, you can see the wide variety of weapons. Some guns you can only buy from a dealer, others from the armories, and a very few from airdrops or a mystery box. But like any other gun game, you can crouch, aim, not be able to sprint while reloading, the whole nine yards. Criminality does not have recoil patterns to guns. Each spray is random but follows a basic path. The recoil in the game is something that many argue about whether it's good or bad. I for one think it's alright, but it could be a little bit more difficult to use. For example, if you didn't know, all automatic weapons go up for a bit while you're spraying, then stops dead center where you were shooting, giving no recoil for the rest of the magazine. I mean, if you just look slightly down, then shoot, you can have perfect headshot laser accuracy. As you can see as well, some guns are upgradable at either a dealer or armory, usually trading off stats in one or more areas of the gun for a boost in another. Otherwise, automatics aren't too special, and with all guns, you can catch the reload if need be. Shotguns are very inconsistent when it comes to damage output. One time, you can hit a full headshot with a double barrel and get a kill, the next he eats the whole barrel and is somehow left on 5 HP. Pistols are, well, pistols. The Beretta is pretty much a BB gun and the Magnum is a pocket sniper. Overall, the gunplay in this game is simple but sweet, which is also the issue with it. Criminality is a very repetitive game that can get stale fast. As I said from the start, your only objective in the game is getting money and leveling up. And unfortunately, there are only a small handful of ways you can get those things. Getting XP to level up once you're above level 12 is only going to be viable through PvP and looting because kicking down doors won't be enough at that point. Whereas getting money is easy, but extremely bland and boring. I think the biggest turnoff for criminality is oh, right here, brother. the community. I have been a part of the criminality community for just shy of two years now, and I can say with certainty that this place oh, needs its own area anymore. in hell. The doxers, exploiters. <laughs> So is this guy legit? Commonality of slurs and hostility towards new players is just a slice of the pie you would be getting from joining the crim community. Don't get me wrong, all communities have their bad actors, just criminality's bad actors are as loud as one can get. The game literally has a filter for when people spam easy in the chat because toxicity used to be rampant. People quite literally gatekeep information that could help new players because they are new. Out of all the people I've met in criminality and talked to long enough for someone to call them a friend, I'd say 98% of them say some type of slur daily, oh which is goodness. why I understand why so many people want to stray away from the community or are uncomfortable being associated. And often it's hard to even understand what's going on with the game. We'd have extremely delayed updates or have no clue when the next is coming. Like are we going to have a Halloween update this year or why is the winter update dropping when it's almost summer? Communication is something I've always hoped criminality would get better with because it is absolutely horrible. Even as I'm making this video, I have had to put it on delay for a long while because I was hoping to get free cam in my VIP server to get you guys high quality shots. Mind you, I have been patiently waiting and politely asking for nine days now, even letting them know I can't really continue editing until I get an answer. The responses I got were to ask a different higher up, and when I did, I was left on complete radio silence. I tried asking a few days down the line again, and long and behold, absolutely nothing. I was even told to apply for content creator to get access for free cam. The problem is they don't tell you how long it takes to review applications and I'd assume they wouldn't even tell you if you didn't make it and have to try again later. Ridiculous. Back to updates, I don't think they understand how impactful it is to occasionally tell the community what's being worked on, if anything, or what they plan to work on next. Instead, once again, we are just constantly left on radio silence, not knowing what's to come or why. But maybe it's more complicated 
complicated than just taking five minutes to tell the community what's going on. Maybe I'm just ignorant. What makes it worse is that most people will agree instantaneously that higher ups of criminality do not care about the player base at all. There are arguments for favoritism, horrible moderation to the point that you can't even report cheaters without having to take more than 10 minutes out of your day for a proper report to get them banned, and even the developers or managers deleting negative or criticistic that's not a word, what am I saying? Deleting negative or criticism comments about their updates. But for the community, I will admit they have gotten better over the days for sure. Everyone seems to be helping new players out just a little bit more as time goes by, and I guess that's because the community is growing once again and getting an influx due to recent updates. Speaking of, if you are expecting frequent updates jam-packed with content for the game, just turn around and go home, bro. Ignoring the recent 4th of July update, our last updates for the past month have been nothing but skin crates something you must spend Robux on to even get. Which leads me to my final topic. The future of criminality. The patterns of updates the game has made is obviously concerning for me and others. It really does look like the game is becoming more and more of a cash grab with less content per update and more ways to spend your money. Now I personally don't think criminality will die anytime soon, but I also don't think it will really expand much either. I more feel like it will just be surviving. Criminality has no real competition within its game genre. Yeah, some people like to compare it to The Hood, but the two games are functionally completely different and shouldn't be compared at all. This has allowed the game to kick its feet up and do whatever it pleases really. If you were to ask anybody within the criminality community what they think will kill criminality, they will give you an answer you probably didn't expect them. Not the community, not the higher ups, not the updates, but a whole separate game. Blackout. Blackout is a game being worked on by Silver and his dev team for quite a while now. From the sneak peeks alone he has given us, what he calls an incomplete game blows criminality out of the water. The animations, lighting, UI, movement, gunplay, everything is just so smooth and functional. There are quests, missions, raids, and so much content for you to do off the jump instead of just having to do the same old repetitive kill to level up theme. Now this part isn't to downplay or hate on criminality. I don't want criminality to be seen as a boring or stale or repetitive toxic game at all. It's a very good game with incredible people in it, but this is just how things are at the moment. So here we are, coming back to the question. Is criminality worth playing? It depends. If you are someone who loves community oriented games and friendly environments, then no. If you are someone who just enjoys playing a game for what it is and hopping on with friends, then yes, absolutely. All in all, I think everybody should try the game anyways, as you do not have to focus on the community at all, but can just straight up ignore it. Especially when playing with friends, the game can produce so many incredible and funny moments. Solo on the other hand though, that's a story for another day. But if you know who to hang out with and who to stay away from, this game can be one of many memories. The community will be a turn off for some, which I can't blame them, but ignoring that and just playing the game just to play, can be just as fun, if not better. As always, thank you all for watching this long void of a video. There was so much more I wanted to include, like melees, the down mechanic, armor, and much more, but I realized this video would be far too long and would likely tank in quality. Maybe we could do a part two though, who knows? Now normally I don't do this, but I'd like to thank all my channel members for making this video possible. This video will be copyrighted just like my last one, so any money I make is thanks to those guys. If you'd like to become a channel member as well, click on the link in the description. Becoming a member only costs $1. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Much love to you all. One still there. Two. Flashing high again.